Now here's a tape that you may or may not already be familiar with. This is self-fusing silicone. If you are familiar with it, you probably have a roll like this in your toolbox because you know how well it works. And if you're not familiar with it, get familiar with it because its utility is near endless. With this stuff, you can fix low pressure air leaks, low pressure water leaks. You can even fix a water leak while it's leaking because this tape does not care if it's wet. There's no adhesive on this tape to be muddied up by the water. You simply wrap it around the leak. It bonds to itself and seals the leak instantly as soon as you wrap it. We already know that this stuff fixes low pressure leaks. I don't need to demonstrate that. It says it right on the box. It says it on Wikipedia, right? No, this is Funky Fix, where we use things beyond their intended purpose. We're going to use this low pressure tape to fix a high pressure leak. Let's go. Hey, I'm Warner. Thanks for hanging out with Stand Racing today. We have an air compressor over here that maxes out at about 150 PSI, which is just a little bit higher than your standard city water pressure, which is usually around 80. And if you have a hole in your garden hose, this tape should be able to fix that leak, theoretically. At least that's how it's advertised. So I wanted to amp that number up just a little bit and see how well it fares, but stick around because later on in the video, we're gonna bring that number up to about tenfold and see how well it sticks around in that situation. So let's dive right in. So this should be a pretty simple process. We have our fixture here, which is... So this should be a pretty simple process. We have our fixture here, which is which is a <laughs> so this should be a pretty simple process we have our fixture here with, with <laughs> let's forget let's not say fixture it's too hard to say so this should be a pretty simple process we have our tire chalk here we just need to drill a hole down by the base where the surface area is greater because the chalk does have a taper to it and a greater surface area will give us a greater chance of success when it comes to sealing an air leak. So we just drill a hole here wrap it with tape and see if it handles 150 psi and always wear your eye protection. All right, guys, here's showing you that we, we like to get real frugal here at Stand Racing. I think this, oh shoot, look at what I did. This self-fusing silicone, I think, was thicker than we needed it to be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this down a nice, wavy, very uneven line. Use half of this stuff. All right, we got our self-fusing silicone cut down to about half because a little bit of this stuff goes a long way and I thought it was thicker than it needed to be. What's really important with this stuff, since there is no adhesive, it does not actually make a great seal to the contact surface of the item that you're wrapping. It only makes a good seal to itself. And also another note, the tighter you wrap it, the better seal you get up to the point of it breaking, of course. So it's real important that you get the work surface as clean as possible and your hands are as clean as possible and there is no dirt on yourself using silicone. So I am giving us a best case scenario for the application because the workpiece is secure and solid and it's not moving around. I have enough room to get this whole length of tape around the whole surface and pull it tight. If you were working in a tight surface or um, you didn't have room um, to get a full wrap, this stuff doesn't go on as well. Your results won't be as good as they probably will be in this situation. I think this should probably seal just fine. Um, so I'm gonna go one time around, overlap it fully, and then I'm gonna go one time back. You saw that this length of tape was not much longer than the workpiece, and you can see how many times it goes around because it's very flexible, and I'm, I'm keeping it pulled taut, and it went around two times, no problem, so. I have pretty good confidence this should seal without any issue. Nice tight wrap. All right, let's walk this over to our air compressor and give it a whirl. You know, believe it or not, this stuff does actually have an ideal set time, but we don't care about any of that because it does work pretty well right out of the gate. So we've got our regulator cranked all the way down, so it should be wide open. We couldn't use our wide open side with the gauge on it because there's no ball valve there. And I wanna be able to turn the ball valve on from over there, not right in front of the workpiece that we're testing. So we have our compressor set. It's a little bit higher than 150 PSI. That's about max pressure for this pump. Let's crack this thing open and see how it does. Okay, valve opening in three, two, one. Almost like we were using it beyond its intended purpose or something. 
But fret not, my friends, because I have what I think is an ace up my sleeve. We're gonna make this stuff do what it's not supposed to do. And I was gonna save it for later when I was gonna have these pressures up to like 1,000, 1,500 PSI, but if we can't even fix it at 150 PSI, man, this is, <sighs> got some work to do. Born of the carnage left by the desperation of man, a single item stands as humanity's last hope for repair. Super glue, and not just super glue, my friend, super glue and a napkin. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna make a poor man's fiberglass reinforced resin. Except instead of fiberglass, we got a paper towel. Instead of resin, we have super glue. Now hear me out, hear me, hear me out, okay? It should create a reinforced shield. So let's, let's get right to it. So we, we wanna make sure this thing is really clean because we're gonna be applying our poor man's fiberglass epoxy. Just cleaning it up with some emery cloth and then we'll get to the good stuff. We want a little bit of a rough surface for the glue. That way it has something to creep into. Hold on tight. I think this stuff's scuffed up all right. I'm just gonna clean it up with the edge of the paper towel that we're not using. Now we size. Gotta size the paper towel and calibrate it to the diameter of our tire chalk here. All right, well, the razor blade doesn't cut this thing on flat surface very well, so this is as good as we get. Crack this baby open. Clean it up. Ooh, watch out for those fumes. Now we saturate this a little bit so we can wrap it around and not have to squirt up from the bottom. So I didn't get the best camera angle as I was wrapping this thing. We went over the center of the hole with the paper towel and the super glue, and I left room on either side of the cast so I could wrap the silicone around a flat surface of the workpiece. Here we go, folks. We're gonna use the full width of this stuff. We're, we're not pulling any punches here. Just be careful not to stick your fingers together while you wrap. Well, there you have it. Nicely wrapped little steel cast there, or plastic cast. We actually are gonna give this a little bit of time to cure because I wanna make sure this thing works because we need to, we need this thing to work so we can step the pressure up, buddy. I wanna see this thing blow up at a thousand PSI is what I wanna see. Well, here we are folks back over at the compressor and our little guy has cured for, I don't know, maybe about an hour. It's looking pretty pretty. And I'm feeling pretty good about it, but I felt pretty good about it last time and it blew right open. So we'll just, we'll just have to see how it goes. Here goes nothing. Three, two, one. <laughs> Woo! That's it, baby. Look at that right there. That is a fixed leak. Nice and proper. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Now that is satisfying. It's a good funky fix right there. So now all there is left to do is pump this pressure up until this thing fails. Everybody loves a failure, don't they?
guys, here's the final test for our little superstar. We're gonna give it one good pump and see if we can get a pressure reading on the gauge. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, it, the gauge moved, but not by much. Um, crap. All right, off the top of my head, I can think of a few reasons why that might've failed. Either the brake fluid broke down the super glue and they're not chemically compatible, or maybe the gauge that we we're using doesn't have the right kind of resolution to show the pressure at which it broke because the needle did move a little bit. But you see here, the 10 that you see on the screen, that's 800 PSI. And we're not even, we weren't anywhere near that when it broke. So maybe it broke at 300 PSI and we are well exceeding the test that we performed over there. We don't know. This is something that I can see myself revisiting in the future. But for now, I consider it a moderate success. I mean, we have a tool that still works. This is good for 150 PSI. And that's nothing to scoff at considering the tape's only good for little tiny low pressure water leaks and stuff like that. And we did have to add something to it, but it works. And it didn't cost very much. Pennies, napkin, super glue, easy fix, right? So is it funky? Yes, does it work? Yes, this works. That didn't work, but I wouldn't recommend using super glue on a napkin to fix your brake system anyways, even if it did work. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, get subscribed because we're gonna be rolling out with more videos in the near future. Peace.